a rally for far-left movements like the Democratic Socialists of America and the Socialist Alternative. Thanks in part to this petition to remove the statue, one of several local churches that's going to be affected by these new COVID-19 guidelines. As you can see behind me, we've got the COVID testing sites. I go deep, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah you just go up. Oh. That's good. But you might recognize some of her work from around town, like this mural. Each of the goats can carry up to 25% of their body weight, but that's not the only benefit they provide. I'm here in the woods south of town where, as you can see, there's no one around. But if you come out here on a weekend, there's a chance you might run into a traveling group of veterans and their pack goat escorts. This is Casey Brewster. Yeah. And those are the Snake Mountain pack goats. We're a nonprofit organization dedicated in taking veterans and first responders on outdoor adventures, um, backcountry sort of mountain therapy, we call it. Brewster knows the value of mountain therapy from personal experience. I was um, an Iraq war veteran and was wounded in combat. One of the biggest things that really helped me was to, to kind of go back and get away and get out there and do the, the things that a lot of us like to do out um, where no one goes, you know, way out in the middle of nowhere. He began organizing hiking, fishing, and hunting trips for veterans nearly three years ago. He saw videos of tour groups using pack goats in the Pacific Northwest and decided to try it out for himself. The thinking was that they would sort of serve that purpose to lighten everybody's loads. The goats are outfitted with a frame and panniers before each trip. Each of the goats can carry up to 25% of their body weight but that's not the only benefit they provide. When these guys see these goats working for me and working their butts off for me and willing to do anything or go anywhere I go, you know, it really creates a special bond with those with those folks when they come out. They come up to you and kind of, you know, they're your buddy, you know, and they are therapeutic and you, you get uh, attached to them. I'm kind of fond of Juan. So this is Juan. Juan is 230. Come here, Juan, say hello. Dustin Green served in Iraq as a Marine, then returned with the National Guard in 2008 alongside Brewster. He says he tries to go on every Snake Mountain pack goat trip. You know, I was diagnosed with PTSD and was dealing with things. And uh, I noticed that going outdoors, hunting, and just being outdoors helped me a lot. Symptoms of PTSD center around intense emotional responses to traumatic experiences. It can trigger intrusive memories or flashbacks. It leaves victims feeling like their guard is always up and can foster self-destructive habits. Brewster's Animal Therapy aims to help veterans deal with these symptoms. Almost all the folks that we take out, like even the hardest dudes, like they end up just sweet talking the goats and loving the goats and petting the goats because animals sort of have that connection with, with people. Being with uh, other veterans or other police officers, you know, kind of like-minded, um, it helps a lot. Now, before the pandemic, Brewster would usually take about a dozen people on each trip. But now, in order to comply with social distancing guidelines, they cap out at five. Live in Northwest Arkansas, I'm Jack Billiou, UATV News. I'm here outside the Washington County Courthouse where a rally for far left movements like the Democratic Socialists of America and the Socialist Alternative just wrapped up. I've been told they're here in part protesting a tweet from the president late last night in which he claimed victory in the election. It's going to be more of a more of a symbolic gesture to to say that the president is not allowed to declare an immediate victory the night of university of arkansas young democrats president billy cook says this protest is also a way to rally democratic voters who might be feeling beat right now in the immediate knee-jerk reaction people are going to be very upset the democratic party is largely down in the dumps because uh, once again the polls predicted a Biden route. Many Democrats expected a clear Biden victory, but it's now clear that the situation was not so cut and dry. U of A political science professor Karen Siebold says polls can't always be trusted and neither can projections. Results must be certified before they're considered legitimate. The Secretary of State will be responsible really for the election process and it's going to be done differently in every state. She says the situation looks very similar to that in 2016, with a clear Democratic lead in the popular vote, but not in the Electoral College, a system that Cook says should be done away with.
now that the Democrats don't really have a chance of retaking the Senate, there's not going to be any reformation of the Electoral College. Sergeant Murphy with the Fayetteville Police Department reminds protesters to treat everyone with respect. Treat everyone like you want to be treated and uh, we'll all get through this safely and and uh, get through 2020. And as for the results. This is going to go right hand in hand with the type of year we're having. It's not going to be a pretty decisive election. Now, Siebold says you can expect plenty of uncertainty in the coming weeks because we might not even get certified election results until December. For now, live in Fayetteville, I'm Jack Billiou, UATV News. I'm outside of Baumwalker Stadium where it may look empty now, but as you can see behind me, we've got the COVID testing sites. And in the mornings, cars line up to get tested. Many students don't have a better option, and some of them wait hours to get in. So when I learned about the on-campus mass testing, I figured that would be the easiest for me location-wise and time-wise. JC Dodd decided to get screened for COVID after an outbreak in her on-campus housing. But she says getting tested is an ordeal. So I probably should have counted the cars because I waited in line for two hours. Lines wrapped around the parking lot. Contractors approaching cars to check student IDs. This three-day screening event is the largest the campus has seen yet. The partnership with ADH uh, for this mass testing clinic is free of charge. The test may be free, but that doesn't mean there's no paperwork. Once it's all filled out, it's just a matter of waiting for the test itself. They hand you a, like a vial and a swab, and you have to stick it up your nose. When I got tested this morning, I was surprised to learn that the pain of the nasal swab <laughs> Yeah, because your eyes water, you, you, you went good enough. Is overplayed. You feel a little more than a tickle. You did great. It's not terrible. It's not, I think some people are being dramatic. It, it, I guess it really just kind of depends on everyone's threshold, really. After that, you're done. Free to head home and anxiously await your results. Um, it's a really simple, you know, automated text that just lets you know that, hey, your test was, you know, negative. And with a little luck, you might get some good news. And it's been 24 hours and I just got my results back and I'm negative. So every day, the Arkansas Department of Health is conducting testing. The minimum threshold for leaders to be satisfied with the amount done is 500 tests. Yesterday, they didn't quite make that number, but today they exceeded expectations, and they hope to do the same tomorrow. In Fayetteville, Jack Billiou, UATV News. I'm here outside Cross Church in Fayetteville, which is one of several local churches that's going to be affected by these new COVID-19 guidelines. Now, yesterday, Governor Asa Hutchinson revealed that church gatherings are one of the leading causes of COVID-19 transmission in our area. He also stated that more than 200 cases have been found in both Washington and Benton counties that have been linked back to church gatherings. Now, I spoke with Brian Dunaway of the Cross Churches in Fayetteville and Springdale, and he told me that while they haven't had any outbreaks among parishioners, they have had a few among their employees. So obviously we go, we go way deep in that. You know, who were you around? Was it on a Sunday? That kind of thing. So thankfully that hasn't happened yet where, a, where someone has had COVID, tested positive for COVID, and we just came off a Sunday. Now, these new regulations encourage the use of masks and social distancing, although masks are not required. I spoke with several local churches who told me that these new guidelines probably won't affect them because they've gone completely virtual since last March. Live in Fayetteville, I'm Jack Billiou, UATV. Sharon Killian is the board president of Art Ventures in WA, the gallery behind the new Synchrony exhibit. exhibit. She's also an accomplished artist, uh, known mostly for her abstract landscape paintings. But you might recognize some of her work from around town, like this mural behind me. Killian says that the goal of this exhibit is to highlight the many different responses among Americans to the racial unrest of last summer. The gallery includes many pieces from underrepresented groups, including Latin Americans. It also includes a piece of Killian's own work. Innocent black people are getting killed and and I um, I've painted a piece that um, that takes you to the child the innocence of a kid Killian says that the piece titled you're killing me is inspired by her experience as a black American with two children living in fear of police brutality she says the handprints around the girl in the painting symbolize hands up don't shoot 
If you'd like to visit the gallery, you can do so by booking your tickets online in advance. Social distancing protocols must be followed, and only 10 people are allowed in at one time. Live in Fayetteville, I'm Jack Billiou, UATV News.